go to Luke 19.27 and see if you want me to send for you. <laughs> Yahweh says there'll be one head appointed. One. You're not coming out of America with two heads. I'm not joining no organization and with no organization and nobody's anything. I'm already joined on to Yahweh. And I don't need no organization. No organization helped me resurrect Israel. I'm resurrecting Judah now without organization or anybody helping me. I don't need you to help me. Yahweh is my help. Yahweh is my strength. Yahweh is my salvation. Praise Yahweh. Don't come to me with, I, we need to join our organizations together. You have an organization. I'm the head of the nation of Israel. Praise Yahweh. If your organization was successful, you wouldn't be coming to me asking, let's join together. Talking about a coalition. Don't come to me with a coalition. I'm already collazed with Yahweh. I'm fully collated. <laughs> Praise Yahweh. So don't even come to me with we should join organizations together. No. No. Yahweh is one God. Yahweh is one. And it's one nation. One tribe as the chief ruler. And that's all to that. I'm gathering together all I'm supposed to gather. <laughs> you all, you in organizations, if you want to be saved in Yahweh's kingdom, you're going to have to dissolve your organization. And if your ego or your love of glory and power and the little chump chains that you're getting from the organization, prevent you from coming to submit to Yahweh and his son, Yahweh. Hang on out there. All you organizations are going to hell together. There's no compromise. It's come to Yahweh or die. And if you think you can win against Yahweh, there's another way out. Go to it. Go to it. Ezekiel 34, 23. See, this is the answer to Hosea 1, 11, In case you were confused for just a minute. Ezekiel 34, 23 clarifies your mentality so you won't have to suffer Luke 19, 27. Read. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Mm-hmm. Who's talking? Yahweh. Yahweh himself, my father said, he will do this job. He'll set up one, and I'm the one. He set me up as shepherd over you. Now, that takes care of your vote. Don't burden yourself down with that. How many see it clearly?
John chapter 10. That's right, verse 16. John 10, 16. I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Mm, mm, mm. What? How you gonna get around it? Isaiah 56, 8. of Israel said, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. Ephesians 2.14 Ephesians 2 For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. See, that's my job in Ezekiel 37, to break down the wall of partition. See, even husbands and wives have an invisible wall right in the middle of the bed. I'm going right back to where I started. (laughs) Don't want the other one. I turn my back on you in this center of the bed. That's the that's the partition wall. Don't you touch me on this side. You touch me. You ever seen some of you know you're touching the drawer and move over a little. Why do they do that? <laughs> touch them and they... And they come over and touch the noise. Well, in my job of building you as a nation in Ezekiel 37, 22, there a petition, a wall of petition has been built. And as you can see, I'm going to tear this wall of petition, what? Down. First Peter two twenty five. First Peter two twenty five. Here's why it's been so hard for us to get together. Read. For ye were the sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. I'm the bishop of your soul. You that are reading this have returned. Isn't that a blessing? Yes, sir. Isaiah 53, 6. to his own way, and the Lord Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now see what's laid on me? The sins of all of you are laid on me. So that means I, I suffer from not drinking enough water, kidneys hurt, which makes me think my back is hurting. 
Now be still. Go without pleasure. Take no pleasure just every now and then. It's available, but every now and then. Taking no vacation. All of your iniquity is laid right on me. Just being forced to be born among you. To be placed in the midst of the valley of the dry bone. Means that I have to suffer all the afflictions you have suffered. I've had to suffer. See, when they were calling us niggas, remember, I was called one too. When they rubbed your head, when I was a little boy, they rubbed my head for good luck and called me Rastus too. Come here, Rastus. I suffered that too. Come here, boy. Hey, nigga. I had to take that. I knew, I always knew I wasn't a nigga. But I had to take it. You suffered colored waiting rooms. I've never been colored. <laughs> but I went to colored rooms then. Into white folks' house through the kitchen. I had to go to the back door. All the dehumanizing things. You were rejected from going to that school, so was I. What the ignorant of the day take for granted, and which is a curse to them, I suffer the pain. All your iniquity, there's not an iniquity you suffer that I have not suffered. Now I'm tired of suffering. And I'm ready to work my way out of hell. Are you ready to work your way? You have to work. You definitely have to work for Yahweh to get out. Praise Yahweh. All the miracles you see taking place is taking place through those who work for Yahweh. It's not done by those who come to the temple on Wednesday and Sunday and who don't care whether lights are paid or not. And you're going to want me to feel sorry for you when we get ready to leave and you have a job and you're not giving any money to Yahweh. You living, you must have something coming in. You're alive. But what are you bringing? That's rough, isn't it? That, that pricks the heart, doesn't it? I mean, don't be looking at me mean now, because I'm just telling you like it is. You don't want to come with your hand out. But where, where is your hand in your pocket giving out? Some people don't have a job and don't give any time. You don't even have a job or retire. And give Yahweh no time. Oh, I'm not begging you to give your time. I don't need your time. I'm building anyway without your time. But there's coming a time when I'm going to remember your faith. You better believe in time there's coming a time. Huh? Oh, yeah. There's a time coming in time when you're going to wish you had given some time. When I tell you I don't know you, but I used to come to the temple every Wednesday and Sunday. Right. I don't know you. I don't know nothing about you. A lot of folk came to the temple. All around the country. I'm not sitting up in every temple watching those who come. 
I'll know you when you come to every feast as a worker for Yahweh, as a giver to Yahweh, and you can have a job and give to Yahweh. Some of you do much better working on another job out there and then come and give to Yahweh. You do. You just do better. Then you can come and give when it's time for the three feasts. You'll remember, don't come empty-handed. Huh? And you'll know to bring all that surplus to Yahweh. So you may come here as a full-time worker and only have 30, 40, 50 dollars in a week to give. But as a working for the devil, you can just give 100, 200 dollars a week. That's right. But the point is, what are you doing for Yahweh? If you're retired, you have a lot of time. Some, oh, the only work they do is once a month, they walk to the mailbox or go to the post office to get that check. <laughs> That's the most work they do all month. Now, I have a job. Don't say I didn't have anything to for you to do. I do. I have plenty for you to do. So you can come help proof books. <laughs> hey, darling. Ezekiel 37, 23. This gets to be a long plan. Are y'all ready to cut this short and get... You're not? Aren't y'all tired of hearing about the dry bones? You need it? Oh, I was just getting ready to cut some of the scriptures short. Because I can look at the clock and tell I'm not going to finish today. It's all right if I continue? No, I thought some people want to hear a different subject. <laughs> These dry bones are important, aren't they? Okay, well then, since, since my job here in Ezekiel 37, 22, is I must make of you one nation. And uh, now we're going through the understanding of there'll be one king. To all of Israel. One king. You don't think I'm going to raise up and build Yahweh's kingdom and give it to another, do you? I don't care what Israel is doing, I'm king over all of Israel, and shall establish it. I'm establishing the kingdom of Yahweh, and I'm gathering you one by one. I'm so strong and courageous and determined and enthused that I'm willing to take you one at a time. It's all right, I have the patience together you one at a time and tell you don't rush in here come only if you love Yahweh and you love me as his son if you can't get those two things together don't come in here and then you have to be ready to obey Yahweh and his son you cannot separate me from Yahweh <laughs> 